Hey guys, we're in Southern California. I'm actually hanging out with an easy motion rep named Joe Marcou. Hey everybody. And we're having a blast. This has been really cool. We got the van out here. We're digging into all the specs and we're looking at a couple of the Rebel models today. Looked at the Cross earlier, had a blast with that bike. Uh, and now the Rebel Gravel. Okay, look at this thing. It's got drop bars. It's really sleek. It's, it's a very lightweight bike as well. This is 42 pounds. Correct. That's what the battery, the motor, everything. Yeah. Compared to the Cross, that was like 49 and a half or something. It's, right. But that one has a suspension fork, whereas this one has a rigid alloy fork. Uh, really nice. One of the first things that I noticed when we were recording all the specs, it's like, look at these bladed spokes. I mean, talk about aero. And I, maybe these are like mid-dish rims. They're smoothed out. Uh, 700 by 40 C on these tires. So that's 28 inches by like an inch and 5 eighth ish and they're they're gravel grinder tires so a little bit higher volume than you'd have on a city or road bike gives you some traction a little bit of comfort as well if you're on gravel which we are i'm going to take this out a little bit later um, and i love that it has disc brakes because a lot of the older you know road bike style drop bars you, you'd have the the caliber brakes some sort of linear pull design and these ones have disc brakes they they're mechanical not hydraulic be nice to have hydraulic but hey I, I tell you what this isn't bad 160 millimeters up front 140 in the rear look at how cute that thing is just tiny and then the the calipers here they are bladed so you've got some heat dissipation really unique i'm not used to seeing this kind of hardware on electric bikes shimano 105 these are the brake levers right here and they're also the shifters okay and it's not just a one by this is actually uh, tw 22 speed. So we have 11 sprockets in the rear, 11 to 28 tooth, that's the range. And then up front, another 105 derailleur. This is 36 and 48 tooth chain ring. So two of them. And Yamaha is one of the very few e bike makers with the mid drive that allows you to have two chain rings up front. So that's phenomenal. You know, and it gives you a lot of options for spinning and for, for enjoying this as a road bike is, is maybe meant to. With, without question. One of the things that I like doing on this bike is using it as a fitness bike. So yeah. there's times that it's, it's light enough to be able to be used without any assist. And again, that's where it's fun to be able to have the options of being able to switch gears. And then when I'm getting into those heavy hills, turn it on and then just be able to get uphill and, up. <laughs> and, and keep up with people that are really <laughs> motoring. Yeah. That's true. Okay. And he's... He's giving you a great use case here, and there are some limitations to this bike, in my opinion, okay? So one of them is that this is the Yamaha PW motor. It has 100 RPM maximum assist. Now, 100 RPM isn't super fast when you're spinning and you're used to road biking. Admittedly, I mean, if you're if you're looking at something that's going to spin a lot faster when it comes to a motor, then you're going to look at our PWX bikes. Yeah. And of course, that's where you're going to get into the mountain bike series. Um, when when someone is looking to be able to climb on a road bike that's kind of a utilitarian, a little bit of gravel, a little bit of road, yeah. a little bit of fitness, it's a great solution. It, it, and look. It, it, what I would love to see in the future is 28 mile per hour class three, but you know, that's not legal everywhere. And I'd love to see the PWX motor because it does support up to 120 RPM. So 100 RPM, that's just, just one of the drawbacks here, but it keeps the price relatively low. So this is uh, what, 33? 33, 33.99 for a bike that in my opinion, as a road bike, gravel bike, or as the uh, RG stamp on these Schwab Road G1, gravel, road yeah, look gravel. at this, these Schwab G1 all road RG. So, I mean, and look, I, you're marketing and stuff. So I, I'm trying to hit some of the trade-offs here, but you guys have been selling through on these. Oh yeah. One of the, yeah. The, the big challenge that we have with this particular bike is that we are having a hard time keeping it in stock. Yeah. So it's unique. It, absolutely. It's and you, very you're getting special. quality. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump back in on this. Some of the other trade-offs, it comes with cheap plastic pedals. They've actually swapped those out already for some, some alloy ones, but they look a lot like this. Uh, it's just the swabby plastic. At least it comes with pedals. A lot of you know road bikes and stuff don't because people put on clipless, mm -hmm. you know, different designs that way. Uh, it also comes in only one size, and they call it kind of a medium, but, but you know it's got a shorter wheelbase, and that's going to improve your handling and stuff. That's part of the gravel attraction. Is a, this has the exact same geometry as the regular BH gravel bike, so you're going to see the wheelbase be a little bit 
closer to the center. Yep. So you're, it's it's not as long. It's and like that's, 70 millimeters long or uh, inches. Right. Oh, what am and, I and, talking and, about? That's okay. And so <laughs> so you you went Canadian on the Canadian, so that's all good. Yeah, yeah. So but what 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 this does is it gives you a, a different <laughs> ride feel, so that when you're getting on surfaces such as this, as opposed to you know pavement, um, this bike can, is designed to handle it and can handle it with it like a breeze. It's great. Yeah, and it's you know we'll get out there in a second, but I love the paint job. Uh, this is like matte black, gloss black, orange accents carried through, just a sticker on the fork. But we do have some bosses here, so you might be able to do so, like a rack or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe some fenders. There's a an eyelet there, fender eyelet in the rear. We've got another boss down here and here, so you could do a rack. But but easy motion. Come on, bottle cage bosses here and here. I want to see them because you know you get thirsty. I don't know what happened. Not everybody's gonna wear a Camelback like me when especially they're road bikes. Fair enough. You Fair got enough. the little bottle holster yeah. sometimes yeah. on the yeah. and and like here's the thing. I think some shops can actually add bosses. You can. But and you can or you can get the, the Velcro frame. Velcro systems that now that are available that you can get SKS your SKS anywhere. Absolutely. They have them. So there yeah. there are solutions, but there I got to complain about something here. The other thing is it doesn't have uh kickstand provisions in the rear and there's no kickstand stock, which I think a lot of road bikes that's sort of standard. It is standard. I'm coming from the, you know, the e-bike perspective where a lot of them do have kickstands cuz they're heavier, a 50 pounds bike. We had to lean this up against a pole. Not a huge deal, though. Um, so again, I love that. If I had to give up the 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 boss bottle cage bosses, at least it has rack bosses because that's something that's much more difficult to add. And then if you have like a seat post beam rack, those get bumped out of position a lot. It's really annoying. Pro logo seat, really nice. Thirty one point six millimeter. Uh, seat post and that's something that you talked about uh, what do you, what is it the body float you guys yeah we, recommend we recommend the body float uh, isolation seat post or suspension seat post yeah. however you wanted to look at it and and the nice thing is the the what the body float does is it is going to help you uh, take away a lot of those bumps, yeah. if, especially on gravel. Yeah. So if you know if you want to be able to decrease all that weight with suspension forks and whatnot, and still have a speedy bike, and be able to get everything out of your pedal stroke, mm -hmm. take a look at a body float because what a great feature. Talk, yeah, and people tend to ride more frequently and further with electric bikes because you don't have to struggle so much with those hills. I have sensitive knees, so you know you've got the motor support. Even if I had to slow my cadence a little bit, hey, whatever. The hill doesn't last forever. No. And then you're back up spinning and riding it like a bike. That's right. Love that. Uh, and I think this is an inch and an eighth straight on the uh, headset here, and it's FSA sealed bearings that on that. Correct. And down here at the bottom bracket, so square tapered spindle, but sealed bearing. That's important because, you know, some places it rains and stuff, and you don't want the creaking. That's a little bit of an upgrade. I like that. Also, through axles, it looks like 12 millimeters on the front correct. with quick release and the rear. So rigid, it gives you that strength, and it probably supports those bladed spokes. Only 24 of those versus a lot of bikes, it's like 32 or 36. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a weight save savings and aerodynamic efficiency. It's, a, it's an aero thing for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, like we yeah. need to, you know, you got to need it with, with, with the E side of things. Yeah. But there's, a, but, there's a, there but it's a, cool. You got to remember, I'll you're take still going to be able to take it downhill when there's the, 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 the you're going to be going way going faster, faster than 20 sure. with this and thing. And I can yeah. tell you, you're flying on this thing. And you got to remember in, in with, with those drop bars, you're in that aggressive rider That's position so true. and it's so much fun. He's, yeah, right. So, you know, you're up in the hoods or maybe you're flat here, especially if you're interacting with the, the control console here. And it's mounted on the right, but, uh, you know, you probably could mount that on the left yes, too. Maybe it's personal preference. You could unscrew it. Um, and then you've got the drops way down here. So I listed this as as forward leaning and then forward aggressive because you do have those different hand positions, you know, back at the site trying to help categorize. So the limitation on the frame size and the bottle cage, you know, some of the little things here and there, but this is a really unique product that you just don't see from a lot of companies. Would, would you help me flip this around? Sure thing. Joe, yeah, thank you. So I just wanted to showcase those, uh, those, those brakes again, just really nice. The blades help to dissipate the heat, and there's a little magnetic sensor that's passing back here. The motor, this is the Yamaha PW series. Uh, weighs like 7.7 .7 pounds. It's got a nice plastic skid plate down here. It doesn't hang down too low. 
relatively quiet, one of the most efficient motors that I've tested. I really like this thing uh, in terms of the weight and the, the way that it delivers power, it's smooth. It's measuring, in addition to rear wheel speed, pedal cadence and pedal torque, up to 70 Newton meters of torque. It's rated at 250 watts nominal, but it peaks above 500. So, I mean, it's it's very comparable to a lot of the other mid-drive systems out there. And then they've got the proprietary Yamaha battery. It kind of clicks out to the side, and I happen to have the keys in my pocket, so I thought this would be a, a fun, fun thing to show. Neat kind of inset key here. Uh, insert it, twist it. It doesn't spring back, so there's a little bit of a, you know, you kind of have to twist it, but then you tip the battery out, and look at that. You got a little loop at the top, so you're not gonna drop it as easily. 36 volts, 11 amp hours, 400 watt hours. So not too bad, six and a half pounds. It's a little bit lighter because now they've moved to, you know, some of the batteries are in the 500 watt hour range, but there's that trade-off between price and weight and performance, and they say what, you know, pick two. Um, that's sort of how they get this set up. One of the things that I like to gripe about a lot with the Yamaha system is this huge charger. I mean, look at this thing, it's giant. Uh, and it's two and a half pounds. It's a little bit heavier than the other ones. You can't unplug the wall side. So it, it's just long. Uh, and, you know, again, people probably don't need to bring it because they, they've got great range on this bike. It's an efficient bike. Absolutely. But there are some other little gripes I have. There's the plastic plug that goes into the, the little you know, spot right here. It's just, it's kind of tiny. I'm, I'm worried about that getting busted, especially if this crank arm goes swinging past like that. You, you kick it or lean it up against the wall. I feel like there's room for improvement on that. At least you can charge the battery on or off the bike. Uh, it's got a little battery indica indicator right here and it gives you some charge level feedback. So maybe you leave the bike in the garage and then you hopefully store the battery in a cool, dry location. Extreme cold is tough on these. And you're from Canada, what part again? I'm from Winnipeg. Winnipeg. So we're talking about like two years ago when somehow scientists figured out that Winnipeg was colder than the surface of Mars. I don't oh know my how they God. figured that out. <laughs> yeah, for two days. So, so yeah, don't leave great. your battery in the no, freezing cold. absolutely not. Bring your batteries indoor in the winter and give it the occasional charge about every month or but two. But be careful with it too, you know, with the handle, not dropping it before you yep. take off make sure it's and you know it doesn't rattle it's, it's solid it's yeah. solid extreme heat can also be tough on those charge them up every couple months if you hadn't gone for a ride just to keep the you know i hear between 20 and 80 percent is where the cells are most comfortable 20 to 80 is where you're going to get that best life expectancy overall for your bat for your batteries for yeah sure. yeah okay and because it's the standard yamaha battery design here you can get a replacement pretty easily. And then you guys offer a pretty impressive five-year warranty to the original customer. Correct, so you have a lifetime warranty on your frame, five years on all of your components, two years on your battery, and one year labor. So it's nice. it's, it's without question the best and longest warranty in the e-bike industry. You heard it here first from the marketing rep. It's the best <laughs> in the industry. It, it is though, it's actually it one of the best yeah. ones that I've seen. And um, I just like to tease a little bit. Uh, so I like that the battery can come off. I also like that the display can come off. I mean, that's neat because if you do ride this to work or something, uh, you don't want this to get scratched or, you know, messed up at the rack. Just the sun and the rain is going to fade it over time anyway. And then there's a little micro USB port at the base of the control pad. So you could potentially mount a phone or you could, you know, there's a lot of different accessories, Garmin's and stuff, mm -hmm. and you can sort of charge them on the go. Lights that you could mount around the bike because it doesn't come with those stock. These, these tires don't have reflective sidewalls or anything like that there's there's little upgrades i've seen black stickers on amazon so you can do stuff to kind of make this more visible this doesn't come with the fenders straight out of the bat there's just a lot you can do i'm kind of thinking through mentally like how would i use this and I, I think it's just a really sporty bike. It's yeah. a sporty bike. Again, think about that climbing position where you, when you're grabbing these drop bars and you're you're hanging on, you know, from this position as you're climbing. Yeah. You know, shifting your weight left to right. Yeah. Regardless of the fact that there's pedal assist, you can still limit the amount of pedal assist and make this a fitness bike. And then when you need it, get, get onto it. So I like that the ability to use using my arms as I'm as yeah, I'm driving. Yeah. To kind of drive into Correct. the bike. Yeah. Correct. And this is I mean, 170 millimeter lengths on those crank arms. It's it's like a full-size, pretty traditional bike, except for the, the drive system. And I like that all that weight is low and centered on the frame, and it makes servicing the wheels easy. All the stuff that you get from, from like a quality mid-drive system. So here's the display. Uh, booting it up, you just press this little power button there, and it comes to life pretty quickly. I like that you can swivel it if you're getting some glare. That's nice. This is backlit. It's sort of a faint blue. And we're leaving the sticker on it. Just, you know, this is a new bike. Uh, power meter on the left, it goes up and down depending on how hard the motor's working. Clock, 
right there in the center. Speed, it's in miles per hour. But if you wanted to, when you're booting up, you can kind of hold the power and the S button over here, and that allows you to get into settings and change to kilometers for, you know, for some, for some friendly Canadian friends folks. of ours. Yeah. And then down here, we've got this nice battery infographic with 10 bars. So I really like that 10% increments and then a percentage. So you really know how full this thing is. And they also have range estimates. So I'm going to get to that next. If we press the S button, it changes the, the readouts from percentage to RPM. That's the pedal cadence. And then average speed, max speed, uh, mile. I think that's maybe like a odometer. Correct. And then, yeah, there it is again, odometer. So it's a little bit repetitive. And then distance. So as you press the up and down arrows, it dynamically estimates how far you can go. And it's an estimate. It's based on how you're riding, the gears you're in, the terrain. Right. Tire pressure. T t tire pressure is way more important than people realize. I think that uh, any consumer who's considering getting yourself an electric bicycle, make sure you buy yourself a pump because within oh, yeah. a week, your tire pressure is not the same. I mean, right. you should be checking your tire pressure every ride. These are rated 45 to 70 PSI. So for a lighter weight rider like myself, maybe I can drop down the tire pressure, but if I hit a curb or something, you can get a pinch flat. Oh yeah, and that's not fun when you're out on the road. No, it's not, you know, but at least with an e-bike, maybe even with a rack, you have some supplies with you. So coming back down here to the range, I'm gonna hit up and go to the lowest level of assist, which is plus eco. It says 84 miles. That's a pretty, you know, sizable range. Um, it's, you, you know, not the most satisfying. It's basically reducing some of that feeling of weight of an e-bike. Eco is pretty, pretty good, you know, 65 miles and then way up at high, 43 miles at high. That's, that's saying something. And that's what I meant before, even with like a 396 watt hour battery pack to be able to get 40 miles and high, that's Yamaha does and, a good job. And it's a, it's a significant amount of torque at high. You really feel that kick you in. You do. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. You definitely do. So that's. That's that. You can clear some of the trip stats by holding the S button. There's a light button, but this bike doesn't have lights wired in. Is that something dealers can do? Dealers Warren? can get that aftermarket and set that up for the consumers who are watching. Kind of nice. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's about it. Joe, would you mind hopping on this? Because I'd love to get the third person perspective. Sure. What do, do you need? You yeah. need to go for a ride? Yeah, do you have a, here, let's cut. Can we get a helmet? Yeah. Joe's going to go get a helmet. I'm going to take a quick ride and just, you know, show you the motor and try to get some feedback. And then you'll be able to see this third person. So I'm in the highest level of assist, so it'll be the loudest. Nice. Whoa, boy. So it's a little bit jittery right now because the tire pressure's up and I'm filming with one hand, but oh, it just takes off and very stable oh boy even with like some of the divots that we're working with here in the parking lot because these are 28 inch wheels so the bike rides you know pretty efficiently there's a little bit of you know potential like toe clip here uh, to tag that front wheel because it's the wheelbase is shorter and then hitting stuff like this you definitely want to stand up because of the rigid fork um, but yeah climbing no problem I think I'm up to like the 100 RPM there and I saw a huge snake. So I want to show you guys this. This is kind of cool. It's something you could see if you're out taking a little ride. Look at that. It looks like a rattlesnake. Oh man. Wow. Pretty beautiful. Gee whiz. That's a big one too. So be safe. Maybe bring like a first aid kit or something. The brakes feeling pretty good. Even though they're mechanical, you know, the, the, the right brake that cable has to go further. It's a, a little bit more effort and the cables stretch over time, but still disc brakes are gonna stay cleaner. They, they allow for those nicer aero rims than, uh, than the caliper brakes. I'm gonna do maybe a shift over here. There we go, I'm up. That's smooth. Hey, so guess what I saw just up there on the driveway, Joe? Uh, it's got to be some kind of wild animal. A giant rattlesnake. Is that right? Huge. Yeah, so watch out like when you're up there. Okay. Where was it on the road? Yeah, it's like on the driveway, like right. right up there. Good to know. Yeah. Maybe I won't go up there, but maybe I will because I'm curious now. Yeah, do check it out. Nah, I got, all right. Too close. So Joe's going to hop on this thing. Yeah, he's taken off. You can 
see a little bit of jitter in the frame because this is a bit of a washboard. Maybe he'll stand up for this hit. Yep, there we go. Looking good. Very nice. It blends in pretty well, even with that, you know, mid-frame battery. And I like that you're gonna be able to find that battery in multiple locations. So you could actually ship your bike, maybe by air, whereas you're not really allowed to ship batteries because the size of that thing, the capacity, um, you could pick up, borrow, maybe rent a battery on location. So I like that. Did you see it? It must have run away. I have video evidence, oh, I swear. Really? Yeah. Was it over at the top? It was just on the right, like right side in the brush. It must have. It was. I, it was huge, really? man. Really? No, I didn't see it. Yeah, it's orange. But anyway, thank you for for doing the ride. The My tires. Pleasure. You filled them before. Do you remember the tire pressure that you? The, I, I put them in at just at about 65 because I wasn't sure what the type of terrain that we were going to be on, and I kind of filled it for my weight at 180. Yeah. So. Did, how did it feel? How's it riding? Um, you know what? I mean, obviously, over this bumpy section, the washboard. The, the washboard yeah. I mean, that's where I, I got off the saddle, right? I mean, if I was going to stay in the saddle, I would have definitely appreciated a body float yeah. suspension seat post. But this is, you know, this is the, the benefit of, of, of this handlebar position is that it allows me to get my arms to take that. Yeah. You know, this is I prefer this over a straight bar when I'm when I'm riding on on any type of surface like this or mm -hmm. or, or road in my. It My feels opinion. pretty good. I mean, honestly, it looks like it'd be just terrible. And then when you get no. on, the foam's actually pretty comfortable. There is a, there's like a shock stop suspension head or stem, but that can kind of, you, you, you don't want your steering to be sloppy. So it's sort of a mixed experience. I, 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 I like there's, there's certain, there's certain aspects of, of cycling that you want to have stiffness and mm -hmm. this is definitely what you want. Like this is why it's so popular. Yeah. Yeah. And back to hand position. So you can kind of swap it up a little Precisely. bit. Precisely. I think that's it. It's, it's just tons of fun to look at unique bikes like this. I really appreciate your help, Joe. Uh, My pleasure. I think that's about it. Thanks, I, Court. all the measurements will be back at the site. You can ask questions and stuff and these guys, I'll, I'll ask them if there's something I don't know. I'll Otherwise, have fun out there. Keep an eye out for dangerous wildlife. Be nice to it and ride safe. Sweet. Great job. I want to go see the snake. Uh, it was it was huge. And it had a rattle at the end and it was red the whole way. And, and it was on the right? Yeah. How far by the, from the stop sign? Uh, kind of right at, at near the top of the hill, but it was still the slanted part. So it wasn't and the was very top. was it moving or was it just chilling? Just straight, like sitting there on the right-hand side, red. I got to go back up. There yeah, go up and check it out. Ridiculous. Right-hand side, almost at the top of the hill.